Doing a tracheostomy exchange is an easy procedure to do at home. You just need a handful of supplies and some confidence. The biggest thing to remember during the procedure is to stay calm. During this video, I will explain the supplies you will need and explain in a step-by-step -step fashion how to do a tracheostomy exchange. I will also address some complications which may arise in the procedure and solutions to these challenges. Stay tuned. When performing the tracheostomy tube exchange at home, you will need the following items. A tracheostomy tube, tracheostomy tie or tracheostomy tube holder, lubricant jelly, obturator, gloves, gauze, and a mirror if you're doing the tracheostomy exchange on yourself. The first thing you'll need is your tracheostomy tube. When you have your tracheostomy tube, open up the box and inspect the contents inside. There should be several things inside. First, there'll be your tracheostomy tube. Next, there also probably be an obturator inside. The obturator will look something similar to this. And there might be a few other things, such as this clear inner cannula, which looks like this, and it might have a few other odds and ends, such as a trach tube tie inside. But remember, this is a sterile container and do not open it until you're ready to do the tracheostomy exchange. The next item you'll need for your tracheostomy tube exchange is a trach tube holder, otherwise known as a trach tube tie. This is a trach tube holder that I use. My durable medical equipment company supplies it and it's something separate from my tracheostomy tube. This is very comfortable. It has a lot of padding and it also has Velcro, which makes it very easy to adjust. Um, this is something separate that my durable medical company provides. Now every tracheostomy tube has these trach tube ties included in them and they're kind of like shoelace and they require you to tie off the ends and adjust it. And I find that they're very uncomfortable. There's no padding and I just don't like these. So if you do not have these provided by your durable medical equipment company, you can always go online. They're approximately one to $2 a piece. And I definitely think it's a great investment if you don't have. Another item you'll need for your tracheostomy tube exchange is lubricant jelly. Lubricant jelly may or may not be included with your home medical equipment company. For me personally, I don't have this provided. However, I've been able to get these little lubricant jelly packets through my hospital. These are wonderful. They're a one-time use. You simply open up the top, spread what you need on your tracheostomy tube, and throw the rest away. Now, if you can't get these through your medical equipment company, you can purchase them at online. They're about $25 for 144 of them. If you don't want to make this investment, you can also get the personal lubricant jelly. Now this and this are nearly 100% identical and they're both safe to use. Uh, if you get this, the one caveat with using this is it's not sterile. Once you open it up, this inside it has not been sterilized. So you're going to want to take an alcohol swab, swab it completely, squirt out a little bit of jelly, swab it some more completely to make sure it doesn't have any uh, bacteria or anything. And then once you're done with it, close it back up and store it in some sort of Ziploc container. Before I was able to get these little packets, I used to use this all the time and I had absolutely no problem with it. Now these are both wonderful. You put this on the end of your tracheostomy tube, you just put a little dab and it helps slide the tracheostomy tube into place. I highly recommend using this jelly simply because it makes life so much better. Now the next item you'll need is an obturator. This is called the obturator. It'll be included within your tracheostomy tube. So don't worry about having this. It'll be included in the plastic tray. The important thing about having the obturator is it has a pointed tip. This helps slide the tracheostomy tube into place without it getting caught on your trachea. This is also important because your trachea, tracheostomy tube is very flexible. Um, so once the obturator is in place like this, it keeps it very rigid, so when it goes into place, it won't get caught in anything. Um, the obturator is very, very important, and please do not try to put the tracheostomy tube into place without the obturator. The next item I highly recommend for the tracheostomy tube exchange are gloves. Now, gloves aren't required. Some say you can just use soap and water, and that's fine. However, I found gloves are a wonderful protective agent. Uh, your hands have lots and lots of bacteria on them naturally. Even if you use antibacterial soap, you'll still have bacteria on your hands. Now, if you accidentally touch something, I'm always fearful that that bacteria on my hands will get onto my tracheostomy tube. Um, gloves, these are wonderful. They don't have to be sterile. 
but once you have them on, at least they don't have all the bacteria on your hands. Um, so I highly recommend using gloves. Um, remember, they don't have to be sterile, but just make sure they're clean. The next item I highly recommend is gauze. I always clean off my tracheostomy tube area with some gauze. I get it wet with some soap and water and simply clean around my tracheostomy tube before I even start the procedure. And this helps reduce the amount of bacteria on my skin. I also have gauze handy when I'm doing the tracheostomy tube exchange because once you pull out the tracheostomy tube, uh, there will inevitably be some sputum or something that comes up with your tracheostomy tube. I always have this handy. I wipe off anything so I don't um, put that back into my trachea uh, once I do the tracheostomy exchange. Um, the other thing to remember also is once you put the new tracheostomy in, uh, you'll inevitably also have a lot of uh, lubricant that will leak out uh, no matter how little bit you use and then you just want to want to wipe that up. So gauze is always really handy to have. The last thing I recommend is if you're doing your own tracheostomy tube exchange to have a nice big mirror. Uh, now you're going to want to have this so you can easily see putting in and out the tracheostomy tube and it's going to make everything so much easier. Please don't try to wing this without a mirror because you won't be able to see and you might miss and hit your skin instead of getting into the hole and just please have a nice big mirror available and it'll make everything so much easier. Before beginning the procedure, you want to do a couple things. First of all, if you have a bronchodilator, such as albuterol, ipatropium, or salmeterol, or something similar to this, use it before the procedure. The bronchodilator will help open up your airways and make it so much easier to get the tracheostomy tube out and in without any problems. Also, if you have long hair, please tie it back so it's out of your face. And if you're doing a tracheostomy tube exchange on someone else, have them lie flat on their back. It'll make it easier to get the tracheostomy tube out and in in no time. If you're doing the tracheostomy tube exchange on yourself, make sure you're sitting in front of a nice big mirror. When you're ready to begin the tracheostomy tube exchange, remember to do the following. Wash your hands. Please wash them with soap and water. Wash them thoroughly. And then once you wash them thoroughly, please dry them off. And do this before you even start touching anything. You want to eliminate the possibility of getting any germs onto any of your materials and then get them inside yourself. Now the next thing you want to do is take your tracheostomy tube and carefully open it. Again, you're going to want to inspect to make sure all the supplies are there. And once you're sure the supplies are all there, you're going to want to carefully open up this tracheostomy tube. Now, once you open this up, this entire area is sterile. Please do not touch anything. Please simply carefully put this aside and do not touch it until you're ready to do the exchange. And the next thing you need to do is you need to take your tracheostomy tube holder. You're gonna to wanna to open it up. You wanna to to take this out and you're gonna see it's gonna be in two pieces. There's gonna be this long piece and then the shorter piece and there's this Velcro that attaches the two. Now you're gonna to wanna to make an approximate uh, length for this to get it ready for when you do the tracheostomy tube exchange. You're gonna to wanna to take this longer end and line it up to where you have your old one. You're gonna wrap this around. Once you wrap it around, you're gonna see it's too long already, but it doesn't matter right now. Um, next, you're gonna take the shorter end and again, see where it is on your current one. And then this Velcro is gonna Velcro onto this other side. So you're just gonna get approximate length. So it's gonna be probably a little bit longer once you want than what you actually want it, but that's okay. And then you're just gonna have this tail and this tail, you're not gonna need this tail and you're gonna take your scissors, you're gonna cut this off with the scissors and it's gonna make it shorter and it's gonna give you an approximate length. So when you do the tracheostomy tube exchange, you can get this on quickly before your trachea, tracheostomy tube falls out. Now the fourth thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need your gauze. Uh, you're gonna open up your gauze or however you have your gauze, you're gonna take out your gauze Get a little bit of soap and water on this and you're going to clean around your tracheostomy. Um, you're just going to do this just to get off anything that might be dried on or stuck on. Um, you're just going to clean it. You don't have to do a real, real good job, but just enough to get any, anything that's obvious uh, off there so you don't get anything back into your trachea. Uh, once you've, you've cleaned it, the next thing you're going to do is if you have a trach uh, cuff, you're going to make sure you're going to take the, the cuff and you're going to want to deflate this. So uh, you're just going to take your syringe and pull out any air. If you have water, you're going to do the same thing. Pull out any water. Uh, once you think it's deflated, do a second time because there's always residual air or water inside here. So you're just going to put this on again and then pull as hard as you can. You're going to want to do this because it's going to make the, uh, the cuff as small as possible and it's going to make it so much easier to get out the tracheostomy tube. Now, after you've done this, you're going to go back and again, 
thoroughly wash your hands. Wash them, wash them, wash them, and then make sure you dry them on a paper towel or some sort of clean towel. Uh, once your hands are dry, please do not touch anything. You're gonna pretend like now they're sterile. Uh, once you have your hands clean, you're gonna wanna get your gloves, and you're gonna take your gloves, and you're gonna wanna only touch your gloves by the cuff up here. Please do not touch the bottom of this because you're gonna get anything on your hands now onto the gloves. So make sure you touch the cuff up here and carefully put on your glove. And then you're gonna go with the same thing. Get your other glove. Now you can touch anything you want with this other glove. Uh, it doesn't matter, but you're gonna try to keep everything up by the cuff. Open up your glove. Get on your glove and don't touch anything now. Uh, now, once you have this, you're gonna go back to your tracheostomy tube holder. Remember, this is all sterile and clean. You're gonna to wanna to look to see if your tracheostomy tube, if it has the obturator. Remember, the obturator is this device right here. If it has it inside the, the tracheostomy tube or not, uh, sometimes they do package it that the uh, obturator is already inside, and sometimes, like this one, it is not. So you're gonna to want to carefully get out the obturator without trying to touch anything. Once you pop it out, only, only touch this top part. Do not touch this bottom part. This bottom part is members all sterile. If you touch any of this bottom part, this bottom part is gonna go into your trachea and if you get any germs on there, it's gonna get inside you. And then once you have that, you're gonna to wanna to carefully take your tracheostomy tube. Again, only touch the tracheostomy tube by this plastic right here. Do not touch any other part of the tracheostomy tube. Once you have that, you're gonna slide the obturator in. It's gonna kind of snap into place. Once you have this, you're gonna carefully set this back into this tray. Again, try not to touch anything inside the tray because this is all sterile. Once you set it back inside the tray, you're gonna to wanna to get your lubricant jelly. And you're gonna to wanna to carefully open up your lubricant jelly. And again, you're gonna to wanna to open this up you're gonna to wanna to sterilize this with the alcohol uh, and then squirt out anything extra, or if you're using just the regular uh, container like this, you're just gonna to wanna to tear it off. So once you sterilize it, uh, then you're gonna to wanna to take it, and remember, just take a tiny, tiny little bit and just get the tip of the tracheostomy tube. Just get just the tip right down here. Do not get the whole thing, because as you slide this in, that jelly is gonna move up. So just get the very, very tip, just a tiny, tiny little bit. Um, once you have this, you're in good shape to begin the tracheostomy tube exchange. Now it's time for the actual tracheostomy tube exchange. The first thing you're gonna do is decide which hand you're gonna use to actually place the tracheostomy tube inside. I'm gonna be using my right hand. So for this, I'm gonna pretend like this is my clean hand and everything with my left hand is gonna be called the dirty hand. Um, this is gonna be used to touch my old tracheostomy tube and then I'm not gonna to wanna to touch my clean tracheostomy tube with this left hand because it's gonna get germs possibly on that. Um, so what you're gonna to wanna to do um, is take your dirty hand, which is gonna be my left hand, and you're gonna disconnect your ventilator. <laughs> Now, I'm not gonna actually do that right now because then I can't breathe and can't talk. Um, so once you do this though, you're gonna wanna uh, do this process very quickly because obviously you're off your ventilator. So you disconnect your, your ventilator and then with the same uh, dirty hand, you're gonna wanna get off the old tracheostomy tube. You're gonna wanna just take your clean hand and then just carefully cut off the tracheostomy uh, tube holder. And once this is cut, then you're gonna wanna very quickly with your dirty hand again, just pop out the old tracheostomy tube. This is gonna be very, very quick and very, very easy. Once you get this out, you don't have to worry about the tracheostomy tube. This is gonna be dirty. You're gonna be throwing this away. You can throw it wherever, on the floor or whatever. You're not gonna be reusing this. Uh, once you've done this, now you're gonna to wanna to go with your clean hand now and don't try to touch anything else. You're gonna to wanna to carefully pick up your tracheostomy tube right here, right at this end. And then once you have this, you're going to want to insert the tracheostomy tube at an angle. You're not gonna put it straight in like this. You're gonna keep it turned like this on an angle. Um, so once you do this, I usually open up my tracheostomy and then pu push it in. And once it gets to this curve, pushes it in, and then you're gonna turn the tracheostomy tube and push down. Um, so it's gonna be at an angle. So you're gonna push, turn, and push. And once this is in place, you're going to immediately 
pull out the obturator. You can breathe with this obturator. As you can see that there's uh, perforations in it to allow you to breathe, but this is blocking your airway and it makes it very, very hard. So as soon as you get this securely in place, immediately take out this obturator. Now, if you're pushing this into place and you find out it gets stuck before it's completely in, uh, don't panic. You can do something else. Um, if it gets stuck like this, you can go and it'll be fine uh, just like that. You're gonna wanna put the trach tube holder uh, through the ends here. And once you have it through this end, you're just gonna wanna pull the tracheostomy tube around your throat. And as you pull on this tube holder, it's actually gonna pull the tracheostomy tube down into place. And then once you get it to the other side, you can actually um, put on the other, sorry, it's just stuck in my hair. <laughs> put on the other side uh, with the other Velcro and it'll completely push it down uh, into place. But again, as soon as you get into place, take out the obturator. Um, once this is in place, and even if you don't have this uh, tube holder on, if it just got into place without using the tube holder, um, uh, do a quick assessment. Uh, if it's on yourself and you're saying, oh, I'm feeling really short of breath, I can't breathe, immediately connect your uh, ventilator back. And once this is on, it'll be fine. Just do not let go of the tracheostomy tube because it's not in there very well. Uh, once you get the ventilator connected, you can inflate your cuff. And once the cuff is inflated, that'll keep the tracheostomy tube in place. Um, if you're doing this on another person, please do an assessment to think, are they in distress? Do they need uh, respiratory support? At this point, as soon as you have the tracheostomy tube in, you can put the ventilator back on. But please uh, keep hold of the tracheostomy tube because it's not secure. If you want it more secure, if you have a cuff, inflate the cuff. If you don't have a cuff on it, you're just gonna have to keep holding it. Um, once you're, you're stable, or if you don't need the support of the ventilator at the moment, uh, now you're gonna want to connect the um, tracheostomy tube holder, which is very easy. You just attach the ends with the Velcro, put it around your neck, and then attach the other end with the Velcro, and voila, you have it around your neck. Uh, once you have this, the only thing you really need to do now is uh, potentially take some gauze and then clean up any of the lubricant that might have leaked. Um, it's very easy, just take some soap and water, um, and that's pretty much the tracheostomy tube exchange. Now, one thing to notice, if you do see some blood draining, this is normal. Um, whenever you do a tracheostomy exchange, I almost always have some sort of blood either from the tracheostomy itself, um, or from the tube pushing down and when I cough or whenever I get the sputum up, it might be a little blood, blood tinged. Uh, this is not something to be concerned about. A little bit of blood is okay, but if you see lots and lots of blood or if it's just bleeding nonstop, um, be concerned and uh, report it to your healthcare uh, uh, worker and see what they say if you need to get medical treatment or if they just say to wait until um, you know you can get in to see the doctor, um, whatever. But don't, don't be alarmed if you see blood. It's, it's usually something natural. I, I hope this has been helpful and next I'm going to go and actually do the tracheostomy tube exchange so you can actually see me do this instead of just telling you with uh, props and everything uh, how to how I do my tracheostomy tube exchange. One thing I'll tell you is I'm not going to be able to speak because as soon as I take the ventilator off um, I, I can't speak so I'm not going to speak during it just so I can do it as quickly as possible to show you exactly what I do.
Ta-da! Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this informational. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below or please send me a message. I'd be happy to help. Also, please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a wonderful week and a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.